Okay, so I'm going to be speaking to you guys today about the 3D printing of polymer-derived ceramics and composites. So a quick overview, I'll be going into a brief background of polymer-derived ceramics, or PDCs, um, and what that entails and how we are able to um, get that ceramic from the polymers. Um, and then we'll go into different 3D printing processes that we can use to fabricate polymer-derived ceramics, specifically looking at direct ink writing and stereolithography. And then finally, we'll look at my own research that I've been doing on um, PDC fiber polymer composites and why um, we do that, what's that motivation. So first of all, polymer-derived ceramics, as the name alludes to, this is a ceramic that comes from a um, polymer. So it starts off with a pre-ceramic polymer, which is um, a type of inorganic polymer that is typically um, silicon-based. And in order for it to yield a ceramic, it must undergo a thermal decomposition such as pyrolysis. And because we start out with a pre-ceramic polymer, we're able to use the same machining processes that we would on a typical polymer. Um, so this can give us more complex geometries, a higher performance, and a higher resolution of this ceramic because it can start out um, as a polymer. And on the bottom, these um, pictures here depict some of those complex geometries and that high resolution that we can obtain. Um, from this process. So to better explain this, um, we have an example here of polysilazane 2 SICN. So on the left over here, we can see um, this polysilazane, the chemical structure, um, and this would be in a monomer or a ligamer, and it must undergo a cross-linking process at about 200 to 450 degrees Celsius. And in this process, these hydrogen um, will be um, released and those bonds will break between um, the hydrogen and the nitrogen and the hydrogen and the silicon in order for the nitrogen and the silicon to then bond to each other um, and form that cross-link structure. And through this process, we um, then yield a organic inorganic network. And then it must undergo um, further um, heat treatment of pyrolysis between um, 900 and 1200 degrees Celsius. And during this process, we um, yield these methyl groups and the remaining hydrogen um, in order to um, yield our amorphous covalent ceramic. And as you can see in this final ceramic structure, we have um, gotten rid of all of those hydrogens, so we have that organic structure. So as I said before, because we are starting off with a um, polymer, we're able to use the same technologies that we would um, as a typical polymer. And of these technologies, we can use 3D printing processes as well. Um, and all of these options in this table are available um, to 3D print these polymer-derived ceramics. But I'm going to be focusing on direct ink writing and stereolithography. So going into direct ink writing, this process in general is similar to that of fused deposition modeling because it entails the extrusion of a ink instead of um, that typical polymer filament that we would see in fused deposition modeling. This uses a syringe to extrude an ink um, and depositing that layer by layer. So in order to illustrate this better and explain it best, um, I, we're gonna be looking at this example found in this research article um, of 3D printed SIOC. So in this process, um, they used a, started out with a pre-ceramic ink, and this consisted of a precursor for SIOC of Silares MK, and then an isopropanol solvent was then added and a pseudoplastic agent, which was used to adjust the rheology and um, allow the ink to more readily flow. And then also a commercial catalyst was added to this solution um, to enable and help with cross-linking. So after this pre-ceramic ink was mixed, then it is um, placed into the syringe. We can see over here on the right, this um, syringe extruder is attached to an FDM printer. Um, and that was then extruded at 10 millimeters per second at a pressure of one to two bar. And this yielded um, our 
3D printed scaffolds. So they were able to print this green scaffold because it's not yet that ceramic um, and it must undergo pyrolysis at 1000 degrees Celsius for one hour in order to then yield that um, ceramic structure. We can also look at stereolithography um, for, fabricating, for fabricating these polymer derived ceramics. As I'd mentioned in uh, my last presentation, stereolithography or SLA is the process of solidifying a liquid photocurable resin in a layer by layer process. Um, and it uses this photopolymerization process where we have a um, liquid resin that contains monomers and oligomers and a photo initiator. And um, to briefly recap this process, the, when it, this resin is exposed to that UV light, um, that photo initiator, is, photo initiator is excited and starts that polymerization process and the growth of that chain network. So when we see this with polymer-derived ceramics, um, we can use these pre-ceramic polymers, but we must first make them photoreactive. And on the bottom left in figure A, we can see these are three different chemical formulas for pre-ceramic polymers. And these can be made photoreactive by adding photo initiators um, to these monomers and oligomers of these pre-ceramic polymers. And then they can be used on um, a stereolithography um, printer. And this can even be a commercial desktop 3D printer. So then that process will take place of photopolymerization where that laser scans across um, the surface of that resin and forms that 3D part. And that brings us to figure C where we finally have our 3D printed pre-ceramic polymer part. And that is um, still not yet a ceramic and so it must undergo pyrolysis um, at 1000 degrees Celsius in order to obtain that polymer derived ceramic. And this, now we can look at, now that we've seen how polymer derived ceramics can be made using these processes, we can see how we use them. Um, and especially in regards to my own research um, and how we can combine these with other materials in order to improve their properties. So that brings us to composites and their benefits. So put it simply, Composites are the combination of two dissimilar materials, and we use them um, in order to um, take two different materials and combine their properties in order to um, increase that material's um, performance. So we can see this illustrated on the bottom left with this polymer drive ceramic and polymer drive ceramic composite. So in the purple line, um, down here with the unreinforced, that is just a pure polymer derived ceramic. And as you can see, it can um, withdraw a force, but there is little to no plastic deformation. However, when we um, fiber reinforce this polymer derived ceramic, creating a composite, we can see that there, it can withstand a higher force and it has that um, plastic deformation, which um, increase means that there's an increase in toughness and that it can absorb has the ability to absorb more energy. And this is often um, desirable and engineers um, prefer this because we can see the deformation before failure. Whereas if it was a pure ceramic, um, we would not have signs of failure before um, the material were to, were to fail. Another example we can see is with polymer matrix composites. Down here in the green bubble, we can see where polymers lie um, where they have a low density and they are easily machinable. So those are some of the benefits of those polymers. But um, compared to ceramics and metals, their stiffness and their strength is much lower. And so in order to improve that stiffness um, and to retain the low density property, we can combine ceramics to these polymers in order to um, increase that stiffness but also maintain the machinability and the low density of a polymer. And this brings us to my own research, which I've done this summer, um, where we combined um, polymer derived ceramics fibers into a polymer based resin. And um, because we were unable to uh, use or unable to obtain a photosensitive 
um, pre-ceramic polymer resin. Um, then we opted for using polymer drive ceramics in um, a commercial clear resin. So as I said, this brings us to my research, um, which is the additive manufacturing of polymer drive ceramic fiber reinforced polymer matrix composites. So in this process, um, I followed three main steps. And the first of these was to fabricate the PDC fibers um, that we would use in the commercial clear resin. And this was through electro spinning. And in this process of electro spinning, we used a pre-ceramic polymer solution and um, that was mixed and then placed into a syringe pump, which then slowly um, and carefully pressed the um, syringe and um, through the syringe and attached at the end of the metal syringe needle was a voltage source, um, which then allowed for that um, to be spun into a fiber and was collected on this membrane collector, which was the grounded end of that um, potential difference. And we collected the fiber mat from there and then cross-linked that fiber mat and then pyrolyzed it um, in order to create our polymer-derived ceram uh, ceramic fiber mat. So we then used this um, PDC fiber mat to um, create an ink with isopropanol, which then we added in various concentrations to our commercial clear resin in order to create a composite. And then after we created these different concentrations of our composite, then we 3D printed those on our stereo lithography machine um, and then performed various tensile testings on those samples, um, which we can see those samples here, um, very ranging in various concentrations. So then we performed tensile tests on these samples in order to evaluate the tensile strength, the stiffness, the strain to failure, in order to see how the different concentrations of our PDC fiber affected those properties. And I will um, dive into those results of those testings in future presentations. In summary, this presentation, I went over the background of polymer-derived ceramics and how we're able to obtain that ceramic from a, from a pre-ceramic polymer. Then I dove into the 3D printing processes in order to fabricate those polymer-derived ceramics, specifically looking at direct ink writing and stereolithography. And then finally, ended on my own research and how I incorporate polymer drive ceramics into polymer um, composites. In my past presentations, we went over a general overview of additive manufacturing, then looked closer at fused deposition modeling of polymers and stereolithography of polymers. Today, I presented on the 3D printing of polymer drive ceramics and composites. And in my future presentation, um, I will sum up the results of my research this summer. Thank you so much. Any questions? Thank you, Maren. Very nice presentation.